Welcome to Blind Cafe's Naked DJ's Podcast, where every day we expose ourselves to the very best music. Some days we like to shake it up, some days we let it all hang out, and others we just like to stick it out there for you to listen to. Welcome to the Naked DJ Podcast. So great to have you here. If you are a regular listener, we appreciate your support. And if this is your first time, welcome. We hope that you make this podcast one of your favorites. We are the Naked DJs. We expose ourselves to all kinds of music to uh, bring you the best uh, podcast related to all the genres of music. So, great to have you aboard tonight listening. The gang is all here. We got Lightning Blind Mike. We got Julie, Foxy Lady J, Maria, DJ Curveball, and I am your host for today. I'm DJ Tom. We've got uh, a great show lined up for you, like I said, and we're excited to, to bring it to you. One of the things that make urban legends in terms of music are the origin of certain songs that are a mystery. Like, for example, Hotel California. What was that song written about anyway? Or uh, Blinded by the Lights. How, how did that song come about in the first place? And another song that I actually played on a slice of the 70s today. Bye bye Miss American Pie. Now there's all there was a, a lot of controversy back in 1972 when the song came out about why it was written. Was it written about Buddy Holly or was it written about something else? And and uh, Don McLean came out in 2019 and he said, "No, I didn't write the song about." buddy holly i wrote about something else and julie's gonna tell us all about it but um my my question that i pose to y'all is why did he wait until 2019 why do you wait some several decades later to come out and and make that point but uh julie take it away that's a very good question because it was over 50 years that he kept the secret and he finally had an interview with the guardian and spilled the beans he said the song was about the death of his father when he was 11 or 15 i think and he said he cried for two weeks and obviously the first line uh chevy to the levy and the levy was dry he said because that's it was a party and there was no alcohol at the party. And there were many other references in the song. I was absolutely stunned when I read the article because I truly thought it was about the crash of Buddy Holly with the day the music died. Did everybody else? I always did because that's, that's when I considered the day the music died myself. But that's, you know, the way I look at it, because I'm a big Buddy Holly fan, as well as the big bopper and Richie Valens. I only thought it because I heard it on a radio show once years and years ago. But if you listen to it, there are a lot of things going on there, including at the end, the losing of religion, it seemed. So I'm I'm not at all surprised. I'm, you know, now I'm very curious about how his father died and more of the references that 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 were to that um to the to the real uh story well my question would have been like tom's why did he take so long to to say what it was really about did uh there were there some legal issues or he just didn't feel like talking about it uh all this time well i got i got a theory maybe it's because you know he wants to sell some records, so leave it leave it like a mystery type. I mean, hey, who's a lot of singers have done that. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Not necessarily just to sell records, but also to to keep the mystique of the record and keep people talking and wondering about it. I mean, um, 
you know, just like with Hotel California. What is this really about? He said he didn't want to discuss the lyrics. Even back in 1972, yeah, you know, back in 1972, when, when the song came out, there was uh, there were a couple of theories floating around. One of them was that a random set of lyrics that he just kind of came up with in his head and that had no significant meaning whatsoever. Um, the other theory was, of course, about Buddy Holly. But this, this new revelation is definitely uh, a new one I hadn't heard of. To clarify, he actually cried for two years, not two weeks. And he said he didn't say anything because he wanted to say something that was horrific. And he, he just didn't want to talk about the lyrics. Well, he said that his father was Irish ascent. So I was a little shocked when I heard it was about his uh, father also because, you know, I just didn't consider his father being an American. And then... Tragically, it happened the same time, basically around the same time that the, you know, with the, uh, the big crash and everything else. So it was just amazing to uh, see when that article came out how it how it uh, shaped up. Well, see, now I'm going to be going in to check the lyrics again just to look them over because, I mean, I've listened to the song, but I've never really gave the lyrics any thought. But now that we're all talking about that, I might just go back in and look them over and try to run through them. Well, I always thought that it was kind of like a slice of life or a slice of Americana. He talks about Helter Skelter in the summer shelter. I think he, he talks about a few things that were going on around, not just the death. He said that the line, um, I cried when I heard about his bras, about the fact that Buddy Holly had only recently got married. That was true. If you've seen the Buddy Holly story, that was uh, true in there because he wasn't married for too long. And the the line, uh, the jester to the queen, it was about um, James Dean and Bob Dylan's leather jacket. See, I'm just at a uh, wow because I always thought it had to do with the uh, plane crash and everybody, you know, the big bopper, uh, uh, Richie Valen and all of them. What made the big bopper so popular anyway? He only had that one silly song. Well, Shit. from what I understand, he was a DJ down in Texas. His real name was J.P. Richardson, and he was a popular he was a dj down in texas on the radio and just that one song you know made him popular uh he did have another song that that wasn't really number one i think it was the big bopper got married or something and uh if you listen to running bear he's the one in the background doing the uh the um dum 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 um dum you know that part he also said that the uh lines now the halftime air with sweet perfume refers to the day in May when uh, Nixon extended Vietnam and they were all having a break at school and they were all smoking pot. Hmm. Now, some people think American Pie was the name of the plane that Buddy Holly, Richard Ballins, and the Big Bopper peasant. And Maria's right about the hell to skelter part. That was to do with um, Charles Manson and Sharon Tate, those murders. So it's a little, I think Maria was on, kind of on the right track. It, it's about uh, a slice of American life, American history uh, at that time, as well as a uh, tribute to Buddy Holly and a tribute to the loss of his dad. Well, when, when I heard now that I heard that it is about the loss of his dad, it's sort of like a slice of where he was and where his country was and you know, where Don McLean was um, maybe during that time. And all the yeah. interpretations, you know, he said that did not come from him. So everything that you've heard, 
you know, did not come from him until this release that he just did. He uh, told his grandmother that his father was going to die. And in 1961, his father came up to him and died right in front of him. Ouch. Was it right. a heart attack, an unexpected stroke? What, what happened? He said that his father turned green and just collapsed. And he said he blamed himself. I wonder why he blamed himself. Well, it did well, say he was Irish. Coming somehow. Talk about psychic ability. Well, um, if you think about it now... Here's a little trivia thing to go with the uh, Buddy Holly, uh, the plane crash. Waylon Jennings was a bassist for Buddy Holly. Oh, right. And he's the one who gave up his seat to the big bopper. It's, and he took the bus. And Buddy Holly remarked to uh, Waylon Jennings, well, I hope that bus breaks down, you know, and you, 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 know, you get cold. And Waylon Jennings says, well, I hope your plane crashes. And after the plane crash, Waylon Jennings carried that around the rest of his life. Wow. wow. And that's why you shouldn't joke like that when it comes to things, uh, especially the way the weather was and everything. I mean, Richie Valen, you know, he won the coin toss to go on the plane. He goes, I've never won anything in my life. And, and now you know why, because look what happened to him as well since he was on the plane. Well, plus, I remember in the movie, he always wore like a, a talisman or something like that um because he kept seeing a he was gonna die in a plane crash and they were down in mexico him and his brother and he told this one shaman and the shaman made him a taz a talisman and i guess he got into a fight with his brother and his brother broke it off him and he didn't know that and you know he got on the plane without it wow so julie i don't know if i heard this at the beginning of your of the whole thing with the Don McLean or not, did it, did it say why he just came out with the story? Did I just miss that earlier? No, it didn't say. He just said after all the speculations and after, all, you know, everybody had different opinions, he thought he would finally come clean. But he watched over the years as people had different interpretations of it. Is it safe to say we can all assume that it was about Buddy Holly and stuff? He said that he never discussed the lyrics and he didn't intend on it. He thinks that songwriters should write their lyrics and move on. And usually lyrics are things that's happened in someone's life. So with everybody assuming that it had to do with the crash and him leaving everybody thinking that, I mean, look at all the people that's probably died and passed away thinking about that song. I mean, have you guys ever really just thought about the song out of the blue anywhere at any time? Well, he did say that he let people think it was all about Buddy Holly because obviously it helped his song. That's a point right there. Talk about a money sale. It reminds me of, you know, when an author says, well, I never meant that, you know, when people interpret their their writing and their books. And I, so he, his philosophy was, I'll write the lyrics and move on. It kind of makes sense. I mean, I think that, you know, on some level we all uh, we interpret lyrics in our own ways. And that and was that his, one. his only one, number one hit, wasn't it, for the most part? He really didn't have a lot of hits after that, or before or after that song. Yeah, he he had like a, like a, a yeah, comeback yeah. Back and yeah. in, in the eighties. I think Castles in the Air, and he did uh, Vincent. He had some hits. Yeah. the 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 point of of this is that you know, that something about you know, ly uh, ly uh, songwriters should write their lyrics and move on. But the thing is, uh, when you are that famous. Actually, see, the only reason why I said that about his song is because I heard somewhere saying that his he wrote some really good songs, but none of them became as popular as American Pie. That's no, why I, I said mean, that. That that's an icon, I think. American Pie. Yeah, I, in, in my book, American Pie is an iconic song. Vincent is a good song, though, too. If you've never listened to it, take a listen. I think it's very good. But yeah, overall, I think. Um, American Pie, that's got to be hands down 
And I do agree with what Maria said. It, it talks about Americana and stuff like that. Urban legends are made by the origin of songs and the mystery. For a, another example that I remember is uh, Strawberry Fields, the whole deal behind the alleged death of Paul McCartney that obviously didn't happen. But these are the kind of things that music legends are made from. And glad that we were able to bring that up and discuss it uh, as, a, as a topic tonight. I'd like to have you guys uh, kind of tell our listeners a brief description of what the shows that you do and what your shows are about uh, in 2021. Johnny, let's start with you. All right. Hi, I'm Dr. Johnny Love. I do several different kinds of shows from uh, the Sunday and Monday night rock blocks to country and bluegrass to classic country to dance and throwback. And I do a little bit of everything. And that's what I like to do. I love my music. And actually doing the, the best show I like doing is the country bluegrass because it has the modern country music, which I'm not a big fan of, but I am kind of learning to like some of that, believe it or not. Excellent. Anything, uh, anything upcoming on 2021 that you're going to be doing for any of your shows? Uh, nothing offhand that I can think of, because I know when I do a Magical Monday, I normally don't know what, what year I'm going to until like... Uh, Maybe that day sometimes, you know, then I just put it all together. Well, thank you, Johnny. We're tuning him in on Blind Cafe Radio. Maria, you're pretty involved with uh, several, several different shows as well. Tell us a, um, a little um, bit about what you do. I have two shows on Blind Cafe Radio, and um, I have a Mixcloud page, but most of those, actually all of those right now are Blind Cafe Radio shows also. Uh, for 2021, I'm going to continue my Friday afternoon at Maria's house, which is a 1950s, 60s, and 70s oldies show, and I take requests. Mondays is live at Maria's house, and that's more of a mix. People are at my house, and we do different things. Sometimes I'll have a spotlight artist. Uh, I have a pretty e eclectic um, taste. Um, and, and I'll, I'll show that in that show. Also play requests. And sometimes I'll do something special like go somewhere, like, um, uh, like you know, traveling maybe or, um, or have a special theme. Like I've done girl groups from the 50s. Um, I did a lot of great um, spotlight artists, like um, mostly in the oldies realm, like Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra. I've done the Hollies. I've done Three Dog Night and Jim Croce. But, and I, I, I plan to do a few more of those this year too. And of course, I also have the food music and lots to drink. Awesome, Maria. Thank you so much. Glad to have you a part of the Blind Cafe Radio lineup. Next, DJ Curveball. What, 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 constitutes your shows and what's upcoming on your lineup for 2021 well the shows that i do on blind cafe radio i do the late night strike zone on sunday night for an hour that's all of your favorite r&b hits on thursday night you get double the pleasure with the late night strike zone for two hours all of your favorite r&b hits on monday afternoons from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern, you get the exciting sounds of Motown with DJ Curveball. Well, Curtis, we appreciate uh, your contribution to Blind Cafe Radio. It means a great deal. And we uh, really enjoy uh, having you a part of the group here. And he's uh, Curveball is our editor extraordinaire. He, he, he makes us sound real good. So we appreciate uh, all the effort that you put into this podcast and, and making it come together uh, quite fluid. It's, it's, it's awesome to have you part of our group. Next up, I want to hear from Foxy Lady J. 
Julie. Tell us about your shows and what what do you have uh, upcoming for the Blind Cafe radio lineup for 2021? I don't think you have enough time to go through all the shows I have. But I do a morning talk show with Michael. Um, It's called And Here's Something Completely Different because I don't think anybody does anything like we do. Uh, I mean, everybody does the news and weather, but they don't have Michael and his conspiracy theories. I do uh, an all-new country top 10 countdown on Mondays. I have manic music where I like to bring everybody the top 40 songs in the charts today, both on the US and the UK charts. On Tuesdays, I do the 80s Lady, which is the best hits from the 80s. And then following is the 70s with Dr. Doctor with uh, DJ Tom. We have that around the wrong way, Tom. I think the 70s came before the 80s. And then on Wednesdays, I do the British Invasion and I bring you the best of British hits from the, well, the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s. And I also play one or two of today's brand new songs. And believe it or not, most of my listeners say they prefer the 70s and 80s um, Brit hits. And then on Wednesday nights, this show is a little different. It's called Happy Hour 2 for 1 Specials. I take um, a theme and, for example, if the theme is going out, you know, when you go out, you start with a taxi or a car or a truck and then uh, you get dressed up so I do two songs with dress in and I try and choose a song let's say about the dress one from one genre and one from a different one so I mix up the music and I always like to get a Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin and a Jimmy Buffett one in there somewhere And then on Thursdays, I do Love Is. And coming up on February the 14th, I will do Mushy Love Songs. I don't normally do, you know, really slow uh, love songs. I like to mix it up because there's a lot of good fast ones and rock love songs. And then on Fridays, I take everyone to the beach. You can come catch a wave with me and we can go beach in it together. We have Blind Cafe Radio Beach Towels. They're humongous. And bucket and spades and frisbees and surfboards. And then we go all catch wave together. I do tiki bar tunes, but I have a little help with that show from an alligator named Fred who wears a Panama hat and um, a bandana and flip-flops and some tiki birds that like you to sing along with them. And I think that's about it. Thanks, Julie. She is obviously an integral part of Blind Cafe Radio. I am DJ Tom, and I am your host for this particular podcast. I have two shows. Number one, as Julie has already mentioned, we do a song called Music Buffet, A Slice of the 70s. And I do that particular show because that was a a great time in my life. It brings back a lot of memories for me, and I hope it does you too. Uh, The 70s uh, music uh, is just real relaxing, and and like I said, it brings back a lot of great memories for me. The other show that I do is on Sunday morning at 7 a.m. It's called Praise and Worship, and that's pretty self-explanatory. It's a show that hopefully gets you ready to uh, be involved in worship at whatever particular church or whatever that you are involved in, and it just gives you a time to to be reflective and to meditate on on, uh, what God has done uh, for your life. Uh, last but certainly not least, I want to bring our fearless leader on board here, Lightning Blind Mike. And Mike, t- uh, tell us a-, a little bit about your shows and then uh, elaborate on where people can find the Blind Cafe radio shows and the Naked DJ podcast. Well, absolutely. Good evening. And yes, 
I really wouldn't call myself the fear, fear, yeah, if I get my words correct, fear, fearless leader. I would actually say that I like to try to be a part of the group and, and, you know, hold conversations back and forth and really want to be a part of it. I don't want to be looked at as, you know, the leader. Uh, definitely not. I really, you know, try to share what knowledge I have and hopefully other people share the knowledge that they have as well. But as for my shows, my shows are actually pretty generic as in names. It name, it's just called mixing up the music. So what I do is I play songs from 60s, 70s, 80s, all the way up to today. So basically I always say hits from yesterday to today and that's exactly what I do. I play, I do that on Tuesdays between 2 and 3 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays between 2 and 3 p.m. Eastern, and on Friday nights from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern as well. So I do take requests. If you guys like that request, then you can just email me at DJ Lightning Blind Mike at blindcaferadio.com and I'd be more than happy to get you guys a request. And I would as for where people can find our shows, of course you can find it right here on blindcaferadio.com and you can ask your Alexa to look for us as well. Just say enable Blind Cafe Radio for the first time and then you can uh, you will get connected to Blind Cafe Radio. Also, we have Live 365 if you like to go through our uh, other music there where we as well on your phone computer and Alexa as well. Our other place that we are just been pushing for, uh, for the Naked DJs and our other shows, you can find us on YouTube, of course. You can just go to YouTube, type in Blind Cafe Radio. You can find our page. Uh, subscribing to our page would be very uh, would be awesome, and we would really appreciate that. So you can find all of our Naked DJ shows there, as well as on uh, Anchor.fm. You can find all of our shows on there as well on all different types of platforms. The other place that we are doing our shows, and it'll it doesn't really give us ratings, but it does let people check us out in a different way. It's uh, Mixcloud.com Blind Cafe Radio, and a lot of our DJs are uploading their shows to Mixcloud, and you can check out our shows there as well. I do my rest, oh, and I almost forgot I do my wrestling shows on Tuesday night as well. And the reason why I do a wrestling show, because I used to be a professional wrestler back in the day when I could see, and now that, of course, I don't have any vision, uh, I can't really, well, I can still wrestle. That's that's not a problem there. But uh, basically, your career is over as a wrestler when you can't see anymore, uh, because it's more of a sighted world type uh, situation that you go in. But other than that, uh, I just want to thank everybody to all the DJs that do shows each week that give out their time to the uh, entire station and just make it happen. So thank you guys to all you DJs as well. Thank you to all the listeners that are listening. And again, please make sure you guys subscribe to the Naked DJs. We would really appreciate it. How could you do so more wrestling, MJ? You know, I'm going to go into a little bit of a story here because I just got a late Christmas present and somebody must have thought I was huge because they got me 2X shorts and I had to call and I had to laugh I, and I said, I don't wear anything but a large. And so to answer your question, no, I don't sumo wrestle whatsoever. I would be considered a shrimp. My entire body would probably be as big as their legs. I mean, Johnny geez. said that to you. <laughs> I'm 245 pounds, but sumo wrestlers are what, 500, 450? He's all muscle. Yeah, about that, give or take. You could be the underdog. We also are on Facebook at Blind Cafe Radio. You can tweet us at Blind Cafe Radio. And we do have a web page that is under construction, and you can find all of our schedules on the web page and you can meet the DJ you can find out just a little bit about them and once the web page is finished we will be blogging you can also listen to our radio station from the website uh, links that you can go to uh, to pick your own media player and things to that nature uh, but there will be a lot of information on the website I'm very happy with it uh, we had some issues getting certain things together we might it looks like we might be getting those worked out. And uh, so make sure you guys check out blindcaferadio.com, especially in the next couple months. 
I think we should be fully up and running by then. And they're blind cafe radio slash accessible. So we do have um, a special web page just for the blind and also one for sighted people that has color and graphics and everything else. That's all you want to know and then some about Blind Cafe Radio and our pad, uh, our podcast. Thanks so much for listening and we hope that that, that introduction kind of gives you a, a review if you're a longtime loyal listener or for folks who are first timers a little bit about Blind Cafe Radio. And most of us here are either blind or visually impaired. So that puts a neat little spin on it. So thank you so much for listening. And thank you again for being a part of our listening audience through this podcast or through Blind Cafe Radio. For our final topic this evening, we've talked about him quite a bit here. And that gentleman is Bob Marley. Bob Marley was born February 6th, 1945. And for the past year, uh, folks have done uh, big uh, uh, family of, of Bob Marley and, and folks, uh, followers of Bob Marley's music, have done a one-year tribute to his 75th birthday. And Kurtball, tell us a little bit more about how they're going to close this tribute out because uh, February sixth bob marley will be 76 but they've done this celebration all year for his 75th birthday how are they closing it out curtis yep um tonight at 8 p.m eastern his son steve marley is going to be putting on a live bob marley tribute concert going to be performing live streaming eight different songs from bob marley over the past year, they've done things like documentaries and his his eldest son, Ziggy, has done concerts. After the concert tonight, they're going to have a question and answer session on the Seek app and the Seek VR app. The concert is supposed to be on Bob Marley's YouTube channel. So I realize this episode is going to come out after this so you can... Go back and relive the moment. If you love you some Bob Marley. Now, are you guys going to be checking out the concert live tonight? Any of the DJs? Or are you going to go back and, and check it out? Or are you going to participate in the question and answer session after the concert? I definitely will watch it on YouTube. I just got Ziggy Marley's brand new CD. It's him and his family, um, his children, his dog. There is a song in African, in Swahili on it. Uh, there's one of him and Cheryl Crow on there. And it is a terrific CD. I wish I could remember what it was called. I think it's Ziggy Marley and Family. And he's even got his pets doing reggae, huh? Yes, and the little boy... <laughs> <laughs> he is adorable. He's doing rap, and oh, it, I love it. How many members are there alive? Of uh, I know we've talked about it before, as in generations and and our uh, what was it the uh, the awards? We uh, brought him up before with the awards, as in were they just only allowed to get the reggae awards and, and things like that? I think there's seven. I don't think I'll be watching the concert at 8 o'clock tonight, but I will try to catch it later on on YouTube. What channel is it on at 8 o'clock tonight? I mean, everyone keeps talking about YouTube, but what channel is it on? Is it going to be on Fox or what? The Bob Marley YouTube channel. It's a live stream. Um Another question I was going to ask is, did you guys even know about this year-long celebration? If you did, did you check out some of the other events, the documentary, the Ziggy Marley stuff, any of the year-long celebration events? I'd heard about it from friends of mine that are big Bob Marley fans, yeah. I was aware that something was going on, but didn't have a lot of the particulars. 
I was not aware of it until you brought it to us today, Curtis. And I'm very glad you did because I love reggae. On my Friday morning beach time, I obviously play a lot of reggae. And I did not know anything about it either until I uh, heard it from you as well. Because, you know, this whole past year has been such a crazy year. I haven't really had a chance to really sit down and, you know, look at a lot of other things because everything that's uh, out there, usually you see what's on the news, what's on the news and what's on the news. I mean, that's basically how 2020 went. So I just have not had a chance to check anything out until you just said that. We definitely be jamming on Let's Go to the <laughs> Beach. Well, hopefully you guys be jamming tonight on that Bob Marley YouTube channel. So, so how big of a fan are you as Bob Marley, Curtis? I mean, I, I like his stuff. I, I like reggae. I never really got into it as big as I got into things like rap, R&B, or Motown. But everybody knows Bob Marley. A lot of soul and R&B and that kind of thing. It, it, it's just... It, it, it's a spinoff a little bit of, of reggae, really. Um, I, um, I'll catch it on YouTube for sure. Yeah. Me too, me too. There's another song with uh, Kenny Chesney and Ziggy Marley. It's on his All Saints CD, and it's called... Um, you know, that just left my head right as I was about to say it. Uh, Love for Love City. And it's marvelous the way they did that. And when Michael and I first listened to it together, he said, is that Bob Marley? I said, it can't be. It's brand new. And sounded just like it, him. Yeah, I could tell it was Ziggy. But at first, it sounded just like Bob. You got any comments, Maria? Well, I didn't know about it either until um, you you brought up the um, year long celebration, and um, you know it must have been awesome. Now I read something up. I was doing some reading earlier when you uh, brought up this come him up. Did you guys know how he died? Wasn't it called like melanoma? Mel how is it? How is it said, said Curtis? Curtis? Melanoma. Mel is it melanoma? Melanoma. 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 Yeah, he got. Yeah, he cans, basically cans. got. He he basically got uh, a problem with his toe, um, and 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 uh, everybody encouraged him to go to a doctor and check it out. No, 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 it's no big deal. He didn't do it. And didn't do it. And the next thing you know, uh, it uh, the cancer that was in his toe metastasized uh, through his entire body, and unfortunately, uh, a big loss to the music industry occurred. Yes. Yeah, so Absolutely. instead of him getting it, instead of him getting it amputated because of his religion. He, that's when he said no. So what they did is they took the toenail off, cleaned it, and they did a skin graft from his hip and covered up his toe. And they, you know, he was hoping that was, you know, that would have been the end of that. And then to come to find out that that type of cancer actually comes in uh, forms of, of more of the, the, you know, the feet, the toenails, and also uh, how does, how was it worded earlier? Uh, in in darker Mass. skinned people it, it's it's more common in darker skinned people but is that why it i forget that word mastitized because it was removed it metastasized because Metast he got he got into the see the doctor much too late and the <sighs> the damage had already been done the cancer had already spread Yep. So yeah, when you have cancer, you gotta try to get the treat the earlier the better. Yep. So when he was doing his run, he 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 ran all the time. He stayed in shape. He was running. He was running through New York, and he was just jogging down the street, and he just f collapsed right there on the street. And you know, people had to get him, to rush him to the hospital. I don't know if that's when he died, uh, at that moment, but that's when he realized the cancer was getting too worse or getting too worse. It was getting uh, worse from uh, not going to see the doctor in the first place. A tremendous loss in the music industry of Mr. Bob Marley. 
his music still has an impact to this day, and that's why they've had the year-long celebration. Thank you, Curtis, for bringing that topic to our listeners' attention and to our attention tonight. And that is going to call this podcast a wrap. We thank you so much for listening. We thank you so much for being a part of Blind Cafe Radio through our shows there and through the Naked DJ podcast. We appreciate your listenership. Until next time, we'll see you again. Thanks for listening. Take care. I would just like to second what Tom had to say. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you really enjoyed our topics. If you guys have any feedback on any topics, be sure to hit us up on that Facebook and Twitter. Let us know which buy from the Naked DJs of Blind Cafe Radio, the station that raises cane. Go and check out Blind Cafe Radio at blindcaferadio.com and also follow us on Twitter at Blind Cafe Radio and on Facebook at Blind Cafe Radio. Make sure you visit our webpage at blindcaferadio.com where you can visit our naked DJ. And this is the Blind Cafe Kangaroo, signing off. (laughs) 